Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are drawing a little landscape. I am using pencils. Now I am using a bunch of these Stedler pencils, but I've got a ton of these. I've had this whole set since college. Now I don't draw a lot, so a lot of these have not been used, but a lot of them have. Some of them are kind of little. I'm also using this ebony pencil, which I love. It is nice and black, and it gives you a nice black, dark, color like right there it's really really good if you don't have a full set of pencils and you just need something really dark just get yourself a bunch of these these are pretty cheap they are by sanford i see here but i think there's other brands that make an ebony pencil these pencils and any other pencils that you probably get will be kind of shiny in the sunlight so as you can see if you're looking straight on it it's fine but if you get that sunlight, there's a little bit of a glare going on on these. Do you see that? It's kind of got that um, reflection. So this bugs me. <laughs> I don't know why. It probably shouldn't. Most of these are going to be behind glass because they are pencil, so you don't want to touch them. But it still bugs me that they're kind of shiny. So what I went out and I tried to get a matte pencil. Now I thought... I thought that these awesome black wing, super popular amongst all the professionals pencils were going to be matte since it says matte right there. Well, I was uh, very mistaken and these are going back to Amazon because I feel like that is just stupid. Nobody cares about the outside of the pencil. I sure as heck don't. I don't care what the outside of the pencil looks like. I want the inside to matter and I wanted a matte pencil but to my surprise when I started actually using this um, it is pretty much an ebony pencil but you know like five times the price and it's very very shiny I wanted a matte pencil which I have found and it's this one right here it is the Faber Castell is that how you pronounce it I have no idea I love these these are amazing and they are actually matte okay so this is the 12b Look at it. It's so, so nice and dark and very, very, very little glare. There's not much. Whereas this fancy, expensive black wing pencil is just a good old kind of like a 3B, 4B pencil. The paper that I am using is this Stonehenge Colors by Legion. It is amazing paper, great, awesome texture for drawing. Um, I absolutely love it. I've used it for mixed media pieces like this piece right here that I teach you how to draw in one of my classes. Um, so this paper can really handle gouache, not a lot of gouache, just teeny tiny bits of gouache, only if you're do doing um, mixed media. So not like you can't use this for like watercolors. But it is amazing. So the colors one comes with like five or six different colors. There's like a creamy one, a beigey one, a darker gray one, a warm gray, a cool gray. It's really nice paper. And then I have another pad that just has pure white that I've also been using. I've been using the 11 by 14 pieces of paper and then I just cut them down to get four five by sevens out of one sheet of paper so uh that's gonna save you a little bit of money too because paper is quite pricey all right so let's get started i am using this picture from durango colorado as my inspiration and i'm not going to draw this very detailed like i said i am just drawing gesture drawing it's a very simple quick drawing i'll show you an example in case you haven't seen one something like this just a very simple quick sketch probably shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes to do this but since i'm kind of explaining all the things it might take me a little longer uh so let me get started i am just gonna start with outlining the main parts of these mountains here so the main shapes and then i will go in and kind of shade in the darks and the shadows and stuff so i'm gonna grab for now just a 2b pencil okay and it's not gonna be too scale or i mean like exactly like this one i'm gonna like kind of try to zoom in a little bit and um paint or i mean draw 
not paint, we're not painting today, draw the main mountain here. So I see that there's a little one peeking out behind there. There's this main one coming up to here, and then another one starts higher. So really spend only like a minute, not even doing this part. So many layers of these mountains here. There's just beautiful overlapping mountains and rocks and it's just so pretty. I love mountains guys. I am not a beach person. If you ask me if I prefer mountains or beach, I prefer mountains. I grew up in the mountains in Poland. Um, so I really love mountains but i am stuck living in flat old chicago so one day i'm hoping that my art career takes off and i can afford to <laughs> move uh to somewhere as pretty as this area here because this is just my dream to live in a mountain in a mountain. I mean, in the mountains, not on a mountain, not on a mountain. Um, but this is just so, so pretty. Look at this. This is amazing. Okay. So this is what I'm doing. As you can see, it is not the whole thing. It is just the actual rocks. And I mean, that's up to you, whatever you guys want to do. It's, it's totally up to you. You can do it as detailed as you want, but like I said, that would be a full on drawing. <laughs> this is just a gesture sketch. This is not a detailed, realistic drawing. Think of it as abstract art. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm kind of just getting this little foreground going here. There's really not much for me to do because this is all just hills and little teeny tiny trees way, way, way off in the distance. So I can't really draw any of them. That would not be doable. So I'm just shading in like the, the shadows, kind of where it kind of the, the ground ripples and stuff. But that's it. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to grab, I was going to do this more with these pencils, but I think I'm going to grab this giant graphite pencil um, stick that I have from Poland. I have no idea where I got it from. My dad had it. Um, I think he got it from our neighbor we had who was an artist. Um, so I think it's from him and it's very special to me. I've had this thing for the past 20 six, seven years. And I haven't used it much because I was scared to use it up. But now I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start using it more because I love it. I'm gonna use my little scrap piece of paper here to test out my sides because some of these sides seem to be just softer. And there's like a little thing here that kind of scratches my paper. And I just felt it. There it is. It's something in there it's like really sharp so I want to get the correct side so again these little edges are darker and then the sunlight hits it and then it gets darker again like inside there because of the shadows And this whole thing is kind of dark in there. Um, make sure also to vary the direction you are putting your strokes in. So don't do them all like this. I know we have a tendency to just do this because it's easy on your wrist, easy on your arm. But try to like experiment with different directions that you hold and put your strokes down because it makes it just more interesting. I need a really dark one here. We used to draw a lot in college my freshman year. Even though I majored in graphic design, I went to the American Academy of Art in Chicago downtown and they really prioritized 
learning art, like actual art skills the first year. So the first year we had drawing, we had life drawing, but like the basics of drawing and just like figuring out shapes and shades and all these things. Like we had life drawing all year and it was one of my favorites. I loved it. Just drawing people all day long. It just, it was, or I mean not all day long, for like two hours. I don't remember how long the classes were. I think like two and a half hours. Um, but I loved it. It was so great. So I learned a lot that freshman year. And then we were able to choose our majors and that's when I went into um, graphic design and that's when we just did everything, not everything, but a lot of things just on the computer on Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign and stuff like that. Um, so I didn't get to draw a lot after that. I did sketch because in design you design a lot of things so you got to sketch your ideas out and all that kind of good stuff. But um, you don't get to do this. I really loved graphic design and I really just focused on that. I'm really, I didn't take any painting classes in college, which I'm really kicking myself <laughs> about. I took photography classes, which I really didn't need to. I already knew a lot about photography because I kind of taught myself. I got a DSLR and I just, I figured things out. Uh, so I could have figured it out on my own instead of taking two years of it. But I did love photography as well. So I, I did take two years of photography, but I really wish I had taken, um, painting or illustration or some some other class where I got to use like my hands a little bit more. I thought I was not going to put that much detail into those mountains back here, but it turns out I I did. All right. I forgot I was going to use this a little bit more. This gives me a wider, I can shade in so much faster because it's so chunky. So that's why I kind of like using it for, for my quick sketches because I can quickly cover an area. Okay, these here are not in so much of a shadow, just a little bit here. All right, I am almost done here, guys. Now I'm just kind of moving very quickly, getting these little shadows here done. Mm, let's see what else is here. There's a little thing here. I'm gonna outline these like the actual shapes of these mountains a little darker. So you can just really tell like how many layers of those mountains there are. And I like leaving some of them blank and not filling in at all because those are actually the bright ones kind of in the background that are getting hit by the sun a lot. So I'm not gonna touch those. That way you can kind of tell that it's sunny there. And these, I was right, these are just thousands, millions probably of little, little trees. So I will make little tiny groups of just these little shapes. Oops, stop shaking. Just these little shapes, just to give it a little bit some of some texture. But obviously I'm not gonna draw in any trees. There's some bigger ones here, so maybe I can do that. My whole camera's shaking, I'm sorry guys. My table is not very stable. It's one of those um, electric ones from Ikea that goes up and down with a push of a button, but it's not very like stable because it only has like two center legs in the middle so it doesn't have any support like on the corners and I am right on the corner of it here because I wanted to get as much natural sunlight from my window and <laughs> it is just shaking so much. 
All right, I'm gonna sign it before I like cover this area up. Gosh, I can't spell my own name. <laughs> All right, there we go. I'll sign them pretty. Now there's a lot of clouds in this um, reference photo. I don't wanna put all of them in. I'm just gonna put like a general shape here, just like that. Just so it looks like there's something going on there. I think this is done. I'm going to grab my kneaded eraser. If you guys have not heard of the kneaded eraser, it is um, really awesome because look, you just dab and it picks up some of that pencil. It just makes it a little bit brighter. So you're not really erasing, erasing a lot of stuff. You're just lifting, lifting some color that you don't want there, or I mean um, darkness that you don't want there. So anything that looks a little bit too dark, I can kind of shape it into the shape I want and dab it and then reshape it to kind of clean it off and then dab it again wherever I need it to, to lighten up an area. Okay, I am pretty satisfied with this pretty happy. I think I'm going to do this actual landscape again, like maybe tomorrow. I'm going to do something similar, but maybe like a different look at these mountains. I have a bunch of photos of these because they look so pretty, but this day is done.